Whether you're making your first contribution or you're a veteran investor, one question that commonly gets asked is, how do you find a good financial advisor? Financial expert Robin Thompson has the answer. She's here to sort it all out for us. Good to see you this morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. And the difference between a financial advisor and a financial planner is? Mm -hmm. Well, there's many different types of advisors, and during different parts of your life, you require a few different ones. So a certified financial planner is someone that's going to help you put the base financial plan together, that all of the rest of your decisions around your finances are going to be made from. A financial advisor is someone that will help you with investment selection, so securities, bonds, investments, but they do tend to overlap. So it's really about an advisor-based position. How do you choose the right one? How do you find that person? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing you have to look at is to understand why. So what is the that you're having a problem with. If you're struggling with debt management, perhaps you have credit cards that are high interest rates and you can't seem to catch up at the end of the month, there's actually 48% of Canadians are $200 away or less from paying their monthly bills. That's so shocking, isn't it's it? It's shocking. Yeah. So if you are on that debt side, look for a financial planner to help you. If you're struggling with assets and you're investing but you're not making a rate of return or you're not sure how your money is growing for you, see an investment advisor that can help you with investment particulars. If you don't have a will, you need to see a lawyer who's another type of advisor that can put things in place for you. So multiple advisors with different distinctions that can help you in different parts of the way. Let's talk about uh, what you've, you've zeroed you're zeroed in on the type of advisor mm -hmm. you want. Okay, so you've assessed your situation. Yes. Uh, in terms of verifying this person and their credentials, <laughs> I mean, where do you go to look for that type of thing? Well, there's a few different sites you can look for, but I would say that alphabet soup is what happens in a lot of financial worlds. So you'll see a lot of designations, a lot of titles behind people's names. So what does that mean what for does you? It mean? What does it mean? Yes. So when you sit down with your advisor or your potential advisor, what does the certified financial planning designation mean? And what is it going to do for you? What does the investment advisor designation that they have, whether they're a portfolio manager or they're just an investment advisor, they're regulated with a different commission, what is that going to benefit you? What is it going to provide for you? So there's a few places you can look. FP Canada for financial planners, which is fpcanada.com. If you're looking for a portfolio manager, you can look at the Portfolio Manager Association of Canada at pmac.org. If you're looking for a lawyer, which is a, a huge part of your plan, if you don't have a will, if you don't have powers of attorney, you could look at the Canadian Bar Association for some help, finding a lawyer. Um, so 51% of Canadians don't have a will. If you, 51 percent. If you die without a will, without beneficiaries on insurance contracts or in, in different places, you die in test stage, which means the government is going to decide how your assets are distributed. So all of these different advisors play a key role in making sure that your, your finances are in order and your financial health is in order. How do these people get paid? <laughs> so they get paid in a variety of ways. And this is a very important question, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. The first question is, how do you get paid? What is the value that you are receiving for the fee you're paying? So a financial advisor could charge you per, per plan, so anywhere from 500 for a smaller plan. I've seen up to five or 10,000 for complex plans, so estate plans. Um, if you're looking at an investment advisor, it could be a percentage of asset under management, and then lawyers or accountants tend to charge an hourly rate. So very important, what am I paying? What is the value I'm receiving for that? And then how often am I, am I making those payments? And, and what sort of expectations should we have in, turn of, in terms of like communication with mm -hmm. this person? Mm -hmm. You have to set the standards right away. Um, to start, most, most Canadians start, believe it or not, with less than $25,000 in investable assets when they start with an advisor. So mm -hmm. remembering that assets or investing and planning is available for all Canadians. But you need to establish the benchmark. And then you need to establish what is the fee rate and, and how are you going to dip your toe in. And that's only going to be set forth by having those conversations. At least once a year, you need to be meeting with your financial planner, your investment advisor, any material change that happens in your life, mm -hmm. you need to be seeking a professional. So a divorce, what do you do in the event of divorce? Mm -hmm. If you get married and you need to meld your finances together, how does that look? You know, if you do um, buy a house, you need perhaps insurance to be able to cover off some of those liabilities. Any major shift, any you major need to shift. start seeing someone, you need to start getting some help right away. We appreciate your time, Robin. Thank you so much for being here Thanks today. for having me. Great advice. Good to see you. Uh,